Hi friends, here is my recap of Watchtower Study Article 23, which will be studied at Jehovah's Witness Zoom meetings the week of August the 9th, 2021. Friends, before we get started, I just wanted to mention that we are having a, a Witnesses Now for Jesus conference this coming weekend. August 13th through 15th, 2021. It will be in the state of Texas in the USA. It will be streamed live. Um, and then I will put segments on my YouTube channel afterwards. I will be speaking a couple of times, uh, fourth generation, ex Jehovah's Witness, former Jehovah's Witness, former second, former fourth generation Jehovah's Witness will be speaking and several others, elders and former elders and ministerial sermons. So listen, it's not something that you want to miss, friends. Please tune in. We'd love to have you. And of course, if you would like to attend in person, I would love to meet you. So let's get started. I want to thank you. Thank my friend Diane in the state of Connecticut, USA, for providing the backdrop drop for my slides. So let's dive right in. Notice the preview. Do you sometimes find feelings of loneliness? If so, be assured that Jehovah is keenly aware of your struggle and that he is willing to provide support. Huh. I wonder what the conditions are if he is willing. Why does it not say that he provides the support you need? Because he doesn't. The article is entitled, With Jehovah You Are Never Alone. They take that from a portion of Psalms 145, which says Jehovah is near to all those calling on him. But notice the latter part of that verse. It says, to all that call upon him in truth. I wonder why they left out the latter part of that verse, friends. It seems that the God of the Bible is near to those who call on him in truth. But I guess the God of the Watchtower Corporation is not. Hmm. Notice the box in paragraph one. It says, after, of course, they talk about someone um, missing the companionship of a loved one who has passed away. Rest in peace. It goes on to say, and some Christians, especially those who have recently learned the truth, feel isolated when they face rejection or persecution from unbelieving family members and former friends. Here they go, causing more division right in the first paragraph, friends. Paragraph three says, worshipers of Jehovah were being severely persecuted and Elijah was a special target of powerful enemies who opposed God. They cite 1 Kings 19, 1 and 2 in support of this, but that's right after Elijah had slain the prophets of Baal and Asherah. And the, the verses they cite is when Jezebel threatened his life. Isn't that interesting? Those were not Jehovah's Witnesses, friends. Those are the Jews, the Hebrews. <laughs> okay. Anyway, friends, who is that winged creature in the picture? Angels did not appear to man with wings, friends. Read the Old Testament. They appeared as men. Fallen angels, maybe, are depicted as having wings, such as in culture. You can do internet searches. You'll see them with wings, but certainly not the angel of God. But moving on to paragraph four, it says, Jehovah understands that when we choose to serve him, some of us have to give up a great deal. Why? That may include the support of unbelieving relatives and former friends. Here we go, more division. And in the paragraph, they quote a portion of Matthew 19, 27, about when Peter asked Jesus that they've left all things and followed you. And what will there be for us? The paragraph then goes on to say, Jesus warmly reassured the disciples that they would gain a vast spiritual family. And then they cite Mark 10. So in Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, the very next verse, look to the side, it says, after Peter asked him that question, he says, Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you that ye, all of you, which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, all of you, ye, also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, why did Watchtower not cite that verse? So what had happened prior to this in Matthew chapter 19 was Jesus had told the rich, the young rich ruler, to give up all of his riches 
and then he would obtain treasures in heaven. And, and of course he couldn't do that, but Peter was listening to this. Peter heard the condition, if you give up all of your treasures, then the promise, will you all have treasures in heaven? So Peter says, we've given up everything for you, Lord. What's in it for us? And he says, you'll sit on the 12 uh, thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So Watchtower is taking Matthew chapter 19 out of contract text. However, they do cite Mark 10 in context. And it's there on the side where in 29, he says, if you've left all of these things, the condition, verse 30, ye shall, he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren. He goes on and on. And then in the last sentence, and in the world to come eternal life. But here's the key. This is those, this is for those who follow Christ. Not for those who follow the Jehovah God of the Watchtower Corporation. Interesting. Paragraph 4 also says, what's underlined? That Jehovah, the head of our spiritual family. Notice that they do not cite Ephesians 5 in support of this because if they did, it would say that Christ is the herd, is the head of the spiritual family, the church, the body of Christ. The Jehovah God of the Watchtower Corporation is the head of the spiritual family of indoctrinated Jehovah's Witnesses who get their truth from these men in New York who are channeling their God, Jehovah. Totally different God. Paragraph 5 tells the story of Carol, who has no family in the truth. I wonder why. Did she at one time and then they left and she was forced to shun them? Hmm. Paragraph 7 tells the story of a young sister named Masael who felt isolated from her family when she took a stand from the, for the truth. I wish they told that portion of the story. That's what I find interesting. Paragraph 8 tells the story of a sister named Bianca who has to endure discouraging comments from her family. Why? Why are they discouraging her? Because she's in a cult? Because they're not teaching her truth? because they're causing divisions in the family. Paragraph eight also says that others find that listening to audio recordings of the study material helps them to feel less lonely. Really, hearing about death, suffering, persecution, violence helps people. How does that edify the congregation? How does this build up the congregation, friends? Think about that. It only adds to their isolation and fear, by all means. Paragraph 9 encourages to strive to attend meetings regularly. I don't know, oops, maybe they mean the Zoom meeting. Look at the box, top left. Our brothers and sisters can really become our spiritual parents or siblings, says Irina, a sister who is currently the only witness in her family. Why? Why is she the only witness in her family? Paragraph 12 quotes Carol again, who said she gained many good friendships by spending time with sisters in the ministry and other theocratic activities. Hmm, but they're not doing that. The kingdom halls are closed. Paragraph 13 quotes one sister who said that she, when she learned the truth, the congregation became her family. Why did she need a new family? What's underlined, those who are alone in the truth. Why are these people alone in the truth? It's not the truth, that's why. In the box, Mauricio felt abandoned when his Bible teacher left the truth. Well, I wonder why? Probably because the Bible teacher realized it wasn't the truth. They're focusing so much on these indoctrinated witnesses being left behind by their families, abandoned because their families are waking up. Paragraph 17 quotes Carol again, who says assemblies and conventions are difficult because she is surrounded by hundreds or even thousands of brothers and sisters because they're often paired with their families and she feels alone. Well, first of all, they're not going to assemblies and they're not going to conventions, so this is not relevant. But Carol, if you're alone, then get out. You'll get your family back, I'm sure. Of course, paragraph 17 has to bring in the fact that um, some are lonely after they're losing their mate in death. 
Top left, Melissa is quoted saying in paragraph 18 that she likes when friends invite her to visit them and their families or to go on trips together. Paragraph 19 discusses unbelieving relatives at holiday time, as well as anniversaries of the death of a loved one as being very painful. And lastly, paragraph 20 reminds the reader that Jehovah is fully aware of such feelings of loneliness. I'm sure he is, friends. I'm sure he is. This study article was very empty. It was very easy to recap. There's really not much to it. Um, friends, if you're watching this video, know that you had have and have had and have the courage to conquer evil. That's huge, friends. Your story is now that of victory. And we all need to move forward in truth and leave the watch the lies of Watchtower behind us. Those lies that held us in defeat. And that's why I wrote this devotional, 30 Days of Truth That Will Renew Your Mind from a God Who Is Love. I have this on Amazon or on my website, jwescape.com. Uh, every day it has a truth. This one, you are risen with Christ. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you're risen with Christ. You conquered the world. This gives the scripture a commentary and a place for you to write. How does this truth affect? affect your beliefs about yourself. I don't have my glasses on. I can't see it. Anyway, there's 30 days of this, friends. Consider that. Let's start renewing our minds. Move forward from Watchtower. Friends, keep in mind the witnesses now for Jesus Conference. And uh, tune in if you can. I'd love to see you there. And thanks for watching, friends. All you need to do is cry out to Jesus, friends, and he'll save you. He says, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So I hope you do that, friends. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.